All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to our uh, session last of the day. Appreciate you not dropping out to go drink beer just yet. Um, I'm Ryan Meredith. Uh, I work for Micron Technology. I'm a, um, I'm a principal storage solutions engineer with them, and I work on Ceph. And so uh, this presentation is going into the performance of our all NVMe Ceph reference architecture, which we just completed. Um, so just a quick short about me and my team. Uh, I work for the Micron Storage Solutions Engineering team in Austin, Texas. Uh, we have a big fancy lab, and we do real world application performance testing using Micron uh, SSDs and DRAM. So we have uh, guys working on you know, Ceph, vSAN, storage spaces, Hadoop, Spark, all kinds of different applications to basically try to prove uh, how fast Micron's SSDs can go in real world applications. Um, and so as part of that, we have something called the Micron Accelerated Solution, which is what our, our Ceph uh, reference architecture falls under. And what this is, is we basically combine Micron SSDs, uh, partner software, uh, OEM hardware, so in this case it's Supermicro, and uh, Micron memory in order to uh, basically do performance testing on that, create a reference architecture, and that, that ends up as a, either a SKU you can buy directly from Supermicro, fully supported, um, or it, uh, it can be the basis of a do-it-yourself solution, right? So for something like Ceph, it'll probably be pretty rare for somebody to just wanna go buy it, but this is kind of a, a uh, reference architecture you can see and, and start from. And so for this particular uh, reference architecture, we use uh, Red Hat's uh, Ceph Storage 3.0, and uh, to tell you how great I am, we have Kyle Bader from, <laughs> from Red Hat here to, uh, to talk about our partnership. Is that better? There we go. Yeah. There you are. Oh, okay. Um, so it, it was a great opportunity to work with Micron. Um, we worked tightly. We brought in folks from our um, upstream Ceph engineering team and, and some of our, our performance, uh, performance team uh, downstream that works on, on the product side of things and, and really uh, kind of pushed the limits of, of tuning, tuning Blue Store and, and figuring out the, the, the best way to, to eke out every last bit of performance and push the latencies really, really low. So um, it's been a, been a good experience. And uh, yeah, Ryan will go ahead and give you all the details. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, so here is the, uh, the spoiler alert slide. Um, basically last year at the OpenStack Summit, uh, we presented a reference architecture using our 9100 Max uh, NVMe solid state drives, uh, Broadwell platform, using Red Hat uh, Ceph Storage 2.1, which was Jewel 1023. And this slide directly compares that versus the performance we got in our current reference architecture. Uh, both of these compared are using file store. Uh, so for 4K random reads, we've almost doubled performance. Uh, 4K or uh, 4K 7030 read write is is pretty close to the same, almost double. And 4K random writes went from 246,000 IOPS to 375,000 IOPS. Uh, that's on a basically four 1U boxes um, with Intel architectures and our, our NVMe solid state drives. Uh, so huge improvement from from year to year. And I'm going to dive into uh, to the higher, better numbers uh, here right now. So this is our, our Micron plus Red Hat plus Supermicro, all NVMe Ceph reference architecture, 2018 edition. <laughs> so, um, so for the hardware config, again, we use Supermicro 1029U boxes. Uh, we used, uh, all, those had two uh, Intel 8168 uh, Perly processors in them. Uh, so really, really high bin processors. Uh, my manager asked me to write something nice about our DRAM, so we have 384 gigs of Micron high quality, excellently awesome DDR4-2666 DRAM in there, uh, patent pending. Uh, we also used uh, two ConnectX 500 gig networking cards in there, so these servers have two by 16 slots, so we use two separate 100 gig NICs in it, uh, one for the storage network, one for the client network. Um, and then the most important part, we use 10 Micron 6.4 terabyte 9200 max NVMe solid state drives, uh, which have massive performance. And the, uh, that gives the, the 4U architecture uh, 64 terabytes of raw storage per node, per 1U node, 
and 256 terabytes of total raw storage in the solution. Um, monitor nodes are monitor nodes. It doesn't matter what you put there. Uh, networking, uh, we use 200 gig uh, uh, supermicro switches. Again, one separate switch for the client network, one separate switch for the, uh, for the storage network. And then our load generation servers, we use 10 2028U load generation servers with 50 gig NICs in them. Uh, basically, we wanted to completely be able to completely overwhelm our Ceph infrastructure with clients. So we weren't client limited in any way whatsoever during any of these tests. Uh, for software, again, we used Red Hat Ceph Storage 3.0, uh, which is Luminous 1221, uh, RHEL 7.4, and the only other extra piece of software was the Mellanox OFED driver 4.1. Uh, Switch OS is Cumulus Linux, and then we used, of course, Ceph Ansible to deploy, which is, works great. Um, so the performance testing methodology, this is basically how I tested. So um, I used two OSDs per NVMe drive, so 80 total uh, OSDs in the system. Um, the reason I did that is I found that using two OSDs provided slightly better performance, but significantly lower tail latency um, than using one, one OSD per drive. And the, the details of that are included in the reference architecture if you want to check that out. Uh, the pool config, um, I tested both 2x and 3x replication, uh, 8192 placement groups. Uh, I used 100 RBD images to test file. Uh, with 2x replication, I used 75 gig RBD images, so 7.5 uh, terabytes of total data with 2x replication is 15 terabytes of data. And then for 3x, I used 50 gig RBD images, so it worked out to be the same, so the same amount of data for both. Uh, the reason I used 15 terabytes of data is that we have 1.5 terabytes of DRAM in the total system, and I wanted to make sure we weren't just caching a ton of stuff and getting you know, crazy good performance because we're just reading from DRAM. So, um, so that's DRAM works out to about 10% of our total, our total storage here. Um, for, uh, for block tests, I used FIO against the Rados block driver. Um, for writes, I used a Q depth of 32 and I scaled up the number of FIO processes. So I started with one per load gen, so 10 FIO processes, and then scaled up from there. So 10, 20, 30, 40 as it goes along. Uh, for reads, I used all 100 RBD images because I wanted to make sure we were reading from the entire data set. And then I scaled up the Q depth in order to, to make each one of those processes uh, heavier. Uh, for object tests, it was pretty similar. I used Rados Bench um, in a similar fashion. So I, I fixed threads at 16 for writes and scaled up the number of clients. And then for reads, I wrote out 15 terabytes of data and scaled up the number of threads in order to test that. Uh, each one of the tests is a 10-minute test run uh, at least three times, so the results you see here are the average. Uh, with FIO, I did a five-minute ramp up for each one, which if you look at it, that's where it reaches steady state. Uh, so to really dive into the, to the numbers here, uh, this is 4K random reads. We get up to 2 million IOPS at 1.6 milliseconds of average latency, but you can kind of, kind of see it spike there from 16 to 32 Q depth, uh, so, and that's really where it becomes heavily CPU limited. Um, so we see CPU utilization over 90% here. Um, at Q depth of 16, we've got 1.96 million IOPS at 0.8 milliseconds average latency. Uh, so really strong performance for 4K random reads. Um, this is the same 4K random read graph, but looking at tail latency, so 99.99% latency. Um, and here you can see from Q depth 16 to Q depth 32, we have a drastic increase, uh, basically hockey stick up, as we hit CPU utilization, uh, CPU max. Uh, the next one here is 4K random writes. Uh, this one is a little more linear as we go from 20 clients to 100 clients. Uh, the maximum is 375,000 IOPS at 8.5 milliseconds of average latency. Uh, but really, you can kind of look at the sweet spot. If you look at 60 clients and up, it's sort of flatlined there where you're not adding many IOPS as you're increasing latency. And at that point, you've got 5.3 milliseconds of average latency. Uh, looking at the tail latency there, you can kind of see the same thing, where as the number of clients increases, it reaches an inflection point where tail latency increases drastically, up to almost 400 milliseconds when you hit 100 clients. Um, for four megabyte object tests, uh, what I did here is I didn't change any of the tuning. So basically, I heavily tuned this solution uh, for 4K random write work or read and write workloads, um, and then I ran object tests against them as they stood. Uh, basically, the idea here is that you would, if you were to purchase a solution like this, it would typically be for block storage, and this is just kind of testing the extra performance you would get by using object without having to change the ceph.conf file. Uh, and so here we hit a maximum of about 30 gigabytes a second. Um, and you know, if you go down to 16 threads, it's 29 gigabytes a second at 44 milliseconds. 
Um, so really good throughput. It, it, it did not reach um, the maximum network throughput there, uh, which would be about 50 gigabytes a second. Um, and I do believe that if you took the Ceph comp file and retuned it for object, you could probably hit uh, network saturation with this. But again, we, we kept it tuned for, uh, for 4K random. Uh, for the right workloads, it's similar. So we got up to about 10 gigabytes a second uh, throughput um, with, again, this is 2x replication numbers with 4 megabyte object writes. Um, and you can see the average latency uh, increasing there. So it kind of, again, reaches a sweet spot around six clients where you're at 9.8 gigabytes a second. Um, so yeah, so that's the performance of Red Hat Ceph Storage 3.0 using File Store, um, which is a fully supported solution. It's documented in our, in our new reference architecture. Um, you can actually buy these nodes directly from Supermicro if you wanted to set this up um, exactly as it sits and get that performance. Um, but of course, if I only presented that, the next question would be, well, how does Blue Store do on the same hardware? Um, and so I will show you. Um, so Blue Store and NVMe, uh, has some tuning issues where it's, it's very easy if you don't tune uh, Blue Store properly uh, for 4K random workloads, you'll see a very similar performance to File Store, but worse latency, or at least that's what I saw. Um, and so in my testing here, um, we used, you know, we compared against the Red Hat Ceph 3.0, um, but for, for Blue Store, I used the uh, Luminous Community Edition 12.2.4, which was the newest available at the time of testing. Um, and everything else was kept the same. So network, OS, um, all the rest of the tuning was identical. The only difference, of course, was the version of Ceph and Blue Store. Uh, what I found is that the default Rocks DB tuning is actually the issue for 4K random workloads. Um, by default, it works great for large objects. You don't have to do anything to it. It's, it's awesome. Uh, but it's really bad for 4K random workloads. Uh, so I worked with uh, Mark Nelson, some other folks at Red Hat. We went round in circles, tuning all these little variables to try to figure out uh, the best way to squeeze performance out of Blue Store. Um, and we found two things which, which caused a pretty drastic improvement. Um, one of them was adjusting the max write buffer, the uh, write buffer to merge, and the write buffer size in the RocksDB options. Uh, by default, I think that's 128 megabytes, which is a, lar a fairly large uh, write buffer. Um, and basically, we break it down into many smaller parts. It allows RocksDB to become more parallelized and, and reduces latency. Um, the other variable there is a special from Mark Nelson that uh, reduces the placement group log entries down to 10. I think the default is either 1,500 or 10,000. Uh, the placement group log is used to rebuild uh, nodes when they fail. Um, and when you're reading and writing at 375 plus thousand IOPS or two million IOPS, uh, the placement group log is gonna do you no favors when you rebuild. Um, so we reduced that down to the minimum amount and, uh, and, got the, and that's basically where we measure our performance from. So uh, this is kind of a, a don't try this at home sort of thing, don't put this in production, um, uh, basically because we just haven't fully tested it yet. So at some point I'll get Mark to bless this and we'll put it in and really real RAs for, uh, for configuration purposes. Um, so on to the results. So uh, 4K random reads, they're actually pretty similar. There's not a huge improvement over Blue Store, which, which makes sense. A 4K random read is a 4K random read. There's not a lot of penalty in File Store when you're reading 4K uh, blocks. Um, you get a little bit better latency and a little bit higher I.O. at the top end. So we go from 2 million IOPS to 2.15 million IOPS at a very slightly lower latency, 1.5 milliseconds versus 1.6. So it's not a huge difference. Um, tail latency, there's a little bit more significant difference at the higher end there, where you reduce your latency from 330 milliseconds to 251. Um, and again, this is at maximum CPU utilization. Um, but it sort of makes sense that, that reads are going to be pretty similar between File Store and Blue Store. Uh, the difference comes in when you go to writes. So this is 4K random writes and average latency. Um, we see about an 18% improvement in 4K random writes, which is about an 18% 18 18 improvement, 15% uh, lower latency as well with that improvement. So at 100 clients, we're at 443,000 IOPS at seven milliseconds of latency uh, compared to file store at 375 at 8.5. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a decent improvement, right? It's not the 2X that we've seen advertised with Blue Store. But I think the next one is actually the most important piece of the 4K work here, and that's tail latency. 
So with file store, you see that hockey stick, you know, the darker line there jumps up to 400 milliseconds. Blue store stays linear as you add more clients. Uh, so you're up to about 88 milliseconds of latency there, and it stays um, almost the same as you add more, which means that you don't get those worst case scenarios as you add more clients, as your system becomes maxed out. Um, and with low tail latency like this, or at least, at least lower tail latency like this, um, this actually makes Ceph a little bit more usable for database type applications or applications that can't withstand long tail latencies. Um, so that, that's a, a fairly big improvement in, in Blue Store over File Store. Uh, bigger improvement is with four megabyte object workloads. So four megabyte object workloads, this is reads. Um, we went from 29 gigabytes to 43 gigabytes a second. Uh, so we're hitting almost network maximum here uh, with, with four megabyte object reads um, at a lower latency as well, which, which again makes sense. You're reading from the, uh, uh, from the wall and RocksDB database, and so that's quicker. Uh, but an even bigger difference is with four megabyte object writes. Um, so this is almost doubled, which again actually makes sense when you think about it. A four megabyte object write with file store you know, it goes in once, and its replica goes in, and then both of those get written to a journal and then destaged to disk. So every four megabyte write ends up being 16 megabytes of workload. Whereas with, with Blue Store, you have, you know, your initial four megabyte write, your second copy, and then a little bit of, little bit of metadata on each side. Um, so we get drastically improved uh, throughput and drastically reduced latency using uh, Blue Store with object. And so yeah, so that's, that's basically the, the improvements we've seen in, in Blue Store over File Store running on the same hardware. Uh, the next couple slides are basically summary slides comparing you know, where we've been versus where we're going. Um, this one is a per node performance uh, between a few different solutions. So the first line there is our 2017 Ceph reference architecture, all NVMe. Uh, per node, we got 287,000 random reads and 62,000 random writes. Uh, the next line is a unnamed competitor whose drives start with a P, and uh, they got 360,000 4K random reads and 76,000 4K random writes. Uh, so they beat us by a little bit, and they used better hardware. Um, and going to compare it against what we've done this year, you know, we've got 503,000 4K random reads per node with file store and 539,000 with blue store. And for writes, we've got 94,000 uh, 4K random writes per node with file store and 111,000 with, with uh, blue store. So really big improvement. Um, see, this one compares basically our, our reference architectures, um, similar thing where you can kind of see the, the evolution of performance in Ceph. Um, and really the, the difference in performance between these is, is in a couple factors, right? Because we used, we used newer processors, but they weren't double the speed processors. We didn't double the cores. We used a little bit more memory, but we didn't use twice as much memory. Um, we did use twice as much network, but that's not really why, <laughs> why things are better. Um, but it's also a combination just in the improvements in Ceph overall from 10.2.3 up into uh, the current version of Luminous. Um, and so next year, I'd like to come up here and present one that's at like 4.3 million IOPS. That'd be great. Um, this one is 4 meg object performance. And again, you can see the, the drastic improvement from uh, from solution to solution as it goes from, you know, four megabyte object reads, we start out with 22 gigabytes a second, and our current one is 43 gigabytes a second, maxing, nearly maxing out 100 gig networking. Um, and four megabyte object writes is a huge difference. Our first one was 4.6 gigabytes a second with file store, um, and now it's at 18 gigabytes a second. So, so massive improvement using, um, really using Ceph Luminous in general is, is a big improvement in performance. Um, and then going to, to Blue Store over File Store gives you, gives you a little bit bigger edge. And so uh, basically this reference architecture is, is available right now in that really long, nasty link. Um, or you could just Google Micron 9200 Ceph and it'll pop up to the top there. Um, and that is our presentation. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, oh, and would you mind using the, the mic because they're recording this? CephFS testing, or are you looking at CephFS in any use um, case at all? Um, I am. We're starting to look into that, but we've not done the performance testing on CephFS yet. Um, I know it's still relatively new in, in Red Hat uh, Ceph storage. Um, it's definitely on the, on the list of things to, to performance test, but not currently. 
Hi. Um, why were you using the Mellanox OFED drivers instead of the inbox drivers? Um, we seem to get a little bit better performance from the OFED drivers. Uh, initially, the inbox drivers uh, were, were a little bit problematic, um, although I learned that on our previous, <laughs> uh, previous reference architecture. This one, I just went straight to the OFED drivers. So um, it's possible that the current inbox drivers are just fine, uh, but creature of habit, I, I just loaded in those OFED drivers. Uh, curious why the, uh, the 4 meg object size and, and not something bigger? Um, so the 4 meg object size, that's kind of the, the default object size in Ceph. Um, so we figured that was sort of a, a good, um, good working set to test with. Um, typically going any larger than that would just split the objects into multiple chunks of 4 megs. So, um, so we feel, felt that 4 meg is, is a pretty, pretty good object to test with. Um, and again, these, these kind of tests, we're, we're always looking for, uh, for feedback from, from clients, from customers. Um, if, we're, if we're testing a workload that doesn't make sense or, or there's a workload that you see very often, um, it would be awesome to hear about those because it's definitely good to test things that are closer to reality than, uh, than not. Yeah. Uh, did you test uh, erasure call? Uh, we did not test erasure coding. Again, because it's a relatively new... Uh, new thing in Red Hat Ceph storage as supported. Um, it just started being supported with RBD. And so, um, so we decided to do you know, FIO against the RBD inbox driver and RADOS bench as a starting point. Uh, but again, it's definitely something we're, we're looking into um, for, uh, for performance testing. All right, well, thanks everybody. Appreciate you coming. Thank you.